In this group of videos, we're going to talk about some cost concepts. In the first video, we're going to define some terms, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, as well as some other terminology. In the next couple of videos after that, we'll walk through how to prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured, a schedule of cost of goods sold, and an income statement, uh, all related to this. But let's start at the beginning and just a bit of terminology. Um, when I took this course, uh, these days the, the course that I'm, I'm put preparing this based on is uh, called Management Accounting. When I took the course, it used to be called Cost Accounting. And the reason it's called Cost Accounting, or was called Cost Accounting, is because cost, how much something costs, how much a product costs uh, the company that's selling it, is so fundamental to Management Accounting. It's so fundamental to understanding how your business is doing, whether it's making any money, whether it's losing money, you need to know what your product costs. I had a friend that uh, ran a juice shop and I asked her, hey, how much does it cost to sell a cup of your juice? And she said to me, oh, well, you know, I put uh, uh, this many apples and this many oranges in the juice. They were kind of fruit smoothies. This is how many oranges and apples and this is the cost of the fruit. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. Well, you've just identified your materials cost. So we're going to call that, let me just get my pen tool out here, we're going to call that direct materials. And so for my friend who runs the juice shop, that's the cost of the fruit that goes into the juice, uh, probably the cost of the cups. Uh, those are the types of materials cost in my friend's juice shop. And again, DM stands for direct materials. Uh, then I said, well, any other costs that go into your fruit juice? And she said, absolutely, yeah, I have employees. They have to make the juice. You know, they, that's a pretty big cost. Their, their salaries, their wages, their hourly cost. I said, absolutely, that's a great uh, type of cost. And of course, we abbreviate that as DL, and DL stands for direct labor. And I'll just say that's the employees' wages. And it's the wages of the employees who actually made the juice, uh, not the supervisor, not the person who cleans the floors. The, the employees' wages for the time that they're making the juice is called direct labor. And she said, so that's my cost, you know, it costs about a dollar worth of fruit. And if the employees are quick, probably 50 cents worth of wages, it costs me a dollar fifty. I'm selling my fruit juice for four dollars. I'm making, you know, a couple dollars, two fifty on each cup of juice. And I said, well, there's one other cost you need to worry about. And this is the devil of management accounting. We're going to talk about job order costing in these videos. We're going to talk about process costing. We're also going to talk about activity-based costing. And they all are about dealing with this one cost. They all agree, materials and labor, they're all agreed on how to deal with that. You just use the actual cost. However, there's one cost that's a tricky one, and you've probably heard about it already, it's called overhead. Uh, that's shorthand for manufacturing overhead. And again, I just abbreviate that as MOH. Um, so we have our materials cost, that's the fruit, that's the cups, that's the stuff that goes into the product that we're going to sell. It's directly into the product, it's directly traceable to the product. The labor is the employee's wages for the time that they're making the product. So if I pay my employees $10 an hour and it takes them six minutes to make a product, that's 10% of an hour, you can figure out what the wages would be. The manufacturing overhead though is what I, when I define it, I always say it's indirect factory costs. And you might be thinking a juice shop isn't a factory. Well, it's the indirect cost of the place where you make your product. What do I mean by indirect costs? I mean things like utilities. You know, when she uh, makes the juice, she's got to turn on the blenders. That, that costs power. She's got to have the lights on. That costs power. Uh, other types of indirect costs. Indirect materials is a very common one. Now, what do I mean by indirect materials? Well, the fruit in the cup, that's the stuff the customer drinks. But you can't have a juice shop without actually cleaning the floors, having cleaning supplies. Those would be indirect materials. You can't have a juice shop without them, but they don't actually go in the juice. It's also hard to figure out, okay, how much utilities, for example, went into that one cup of juice? How much power? How much hydro went into that one cup of juice? 
uh, for indirect materials. How much cleaning supply went into that cup of juice? Well, hopefully no cleaning supplies are in the cup of juice, but you know, how much value do I put on the cleaning supplies that you know I, I needed to make that juice? Uh, other things, indirect labor. Indirect labor is the cost of your employees whenever they're not making juice. They might be standing around waiting for customers. Well, that's an indirect cost. It's not the cost of actually making the juice, but it's the cost of having employees that you know stand around and wait for customers. It's the cost of their wages when they're cleaning the floors. That's indirect labor. Uh, there's lots of other types of manufacturing overhead. We can have property taxes, or rental fees, any indirect pro, uh, factory cost. And again, when we look at these MOH costs, it's hard to figure out, okay, for example, property taxes. How many dollars worth of property tax went into one cup of juice? Very difficult to trace. So what we say with MOH is, these are indirect factory costs, and they are typically difficult to trace to one unit. So again, using my juice example, it's very easy for me to say how much fruit went into that cup of juice. You know, get it close. It's very easy for me to say how much I paid my employee to make that cup of juice. I just time the employee, I figure out their hourly wage, I can figure out how much direct labor went in. It's much more difficult for me to say how many, you know, kilohertz is that what we measure power in I don't even know how much power how many utilities went into that cup of juice how many dollars worth of my property tax went into that cup of juice that's much harder to determine and uh, that's a fundamental challenge of uh, management accounting so direct material and direct labor costs those are known MOH costs we end up having to estimate to determine how much overhead cost goes into uh, a product. And we're gonna learn in job order costing, activity-based costing, as well as process costing, different ways of estimating our MOH. So again, direct material, let me just get a red pen here. That's a known amount. Direct labor, that will be a known amount. We know how much labor costs were. Uh, MOH ends up that we need to estimate it. And because we need to estimate that amount, that creates uh, challenges. You know, there's different ways of estimating. So a big portion of this class is about just how to deal with the overhead costs. In our next video, we're gonna learn how to cost out our product, breaking out the material, the labor, and the overhead to figure out our cost of goods manufactured. So we're gonna learn how to make a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. But before I get to that, there's a couple more definitions I wanna run through. So we call these material, labor, and overhead costs. If I look at them as a whole, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. If I look at these three costs as a whole, I would call these costs product costs. These are the costs that go into the product. And again, that's material, labor, and overhead. Well, there's a whole other category of costs that aren't product costs, and we call them period costs. And they're costs of doing business, but they've got nothing to do with the manufacture of the product. So, in other words, I can't make a product if I don't have the, the fruit and the stuff to put into it, the materials. I can't make a product without that. I can't make a product without labor, somebody to make it. And I also can't make a product without those indirect factory costs, without the utilities and the indirectly for having an employee to stand around and wait for customers. Uh, however, I also have costs that I can make a product without, uh, but these costs are still necessary to run a business. So for example, and there's two categories of period costs that I like to go over, selling and administrative, administrative costs. Selling costs are just the cost of selling the product. Again, I can make a product without having any advertising. Certainly, I can do that, but I might not sell as many, so I incur selling costs, and, and those are period costs. They're not part of the cost of the product. They're kind of separate from the product. If I have salespeople and I pay them salaries, salespeople's 
salaries. Those are selling costs. Any cost to sell the product. If I have salespeople that drive cars, the amortization on the salespeople's cars would be a selling cost. Administrative costs, think of office costs. You know, the costs of running a business, having a president, having uh, secretaries, things like that. I always think office costs when I think administrative costs. So these costs are not product costs. They're not part of the cost of the product. The cost of the product is the material, the labor, and those indirect factory costs, those MOH costs. And believe me when I tell you this, when in introduction to accounting, MOH is going to be the star of the show because it has to be estimated. We, we uh, have different ways of estimating it and that's going to be the most challenging part of uh, the first part of this course. So I'm going to leave this video here. In the next video, we're going to learn how to apply this. We're going to use material, labor, and overhead to create a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Uh, and then we're going to uh, move on. We're going to create a schedule of cost of goods sold. And finally, we're going to create an income statement. So that'll be the focus of our next couple of videos.